Hey everyone, Jesus here. I want to talk to you real quick about something called Patreon. The Horrible Gamers Podcast has finally decided to launch their very own Patreon. Head over to patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers to support us and helping you bring the best audio content that we can bring you. And this will help us cover hosting costs and equipment for the show. So please people head over to patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers. Now enjoy the show. The Horrible Gamers Podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Horrible Gamer Spotlight! This week I'm joined by two Canadians! And, first of all, I am Jesus Waxlaw. Today I'll be your host, but from the Great Wide North, I got two people here today. One of them, you already know, Ryan Gibson, Gib8777. Welcome back, Ryan. What's going on, everybody? It's another Spotlight. Let's do it. That's right! And also, from the Great Wide North, Matt Bradford! Matt McFly. Hey, How's it going, guys? Welcome I'm back. Just a little bit norther. A little, little like norther. Five minutes norther. norther than, uh, right. <laughs> He's closer uh, to the so North Pole. <laughs> so you got two yeah, Canadians. Yeah. That means it's 66 percent uh, safe. 66 yeah. percent safe zone <laughs> in this uh, in this podcast. Oh man, <laughs> Matt, we have questions for you this week. Lots of questions, but first Answer. of all. I know that you have lots of answers because you, sir, have a lot of interesting things going on in your life. But one of the things that I want to ask you about is a game that you're in. You're in a video game, right, Matt? I am, yeah. Uh, it came out October called Debris. It's on Steam. If you go there, it's D-E-B-R-I-S. It is an underwater first-person psychological... Where's Ryan going now? Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, he's really interested in it. Uh, it is a first-person underwater thriller that, without giving too much away, adapts to your reaction to the game. Okay. So uh, if, you, if you play enough into it, you're going to come across kind of forks in the road in terms of the plot and in terms of what's going on in front of you and how you decide to respond to those rea- situations mm-hmm. completely reshapes your ultimate goal, and, uh, which is fun doing it because uh, I had to voice you know, five or six different endings Completely different characters, depending on what character the player decides I am. So, it was just a, it was a super neat experience. I did that and another mobile game that's coming out hopefully soon, or it might be never coming out. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, mm. that's mm. it. Debris, check it out. Debris. Will debris ever come to consoles? If it catches on, it, it, they just released a co-op mode for it. And it's getting uh, it's getting some more buzz, like it's coming back on the radar. There's some reviews popping out for it. So I didn't, I didn't realize that that came out. Uh, I want to check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in the debris, the main thing is that you are swimming alongside something called a squid, which is being operated by your partner, who's somewhere down there. She doesn't know. She's in pitch dark, but she can operate the squid and help you out. In the co-op, you are you are that squid. So you have to you know converse with the other player to find out where you are, tackle objectives together. So I think that was a yeah, perfect addition to it. And I wish this would come out on VR because I think that would definitely make this. Yeah, game a little I more think fun. I think it would it would do well on VR just because it's first yeah. person. You're underwater, like even yeah. like Subnautica. You know what I mean? It's an underwater kind of going through caves, and that has VR. Yeah, um, no, totally. And I the sound design is fantastic. So. Yeah. No, so it, it was a cool project. It's exactly what I want to do. I'm just hoping someone famous listens to it and hires me for their next uh, video game project. <laughs> um, being in Canada makes it hard to really get in the scene. But as you know, Ryan, we've got like Ubisoft and Rockstar. Yeah, there's a lot so, up here. You yeah. Know, uh, Cappy. So, um, yeah, Rockstar. Yeah. Ubisoft's big up here. Uh, but, have you ever been to Ubisoft Studio? I have. I did a long time ago for VGO, which is a podcast I did full-time and I'm doing semi-part-time now. I, I went to, they invited me somehow to go see a pl- Splinter Cell demo before it was released. Yeah. So I pretended to I, be a real journalist and 
go ask Splinter Cell Blacklist. <sighs> I can't remember. I ga- I game tested that for Ubisoft. That's when I went to Ubisoft as well. Did you? Um, That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Did you go into their break room? I like, it was a big open room, and I got yeah. to like yeah Old tables and a huge bar with like alcohol just coating That's right. the back. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is your lunch room. Like what? I'm surprised. This is a bar. Ubisoft does not need to charge any loot boxes. They are doing fine. That headquarters is like a gigantic warehouse, like yeah. just penthouse lofts for their developers. Uh, I'm kind of mm-hmm. jealous of. But anyways, we got the track there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. So Matt, is it hard yep. to is it hard to be a voice a voice actor for video games? Is it hard for people that <laughs> might be interested in this career? Yeah. Um. How it's hard getting it? into it. It's harder getting into it, I think. Once you have the ability to, you know, take a shot at it, even then you don't know if it's going to go anywhere, right? Like, I don't know where my next project's going to come from. But Dave Fenoy, who's kind of like, uh, kind of I look up to, he does a ton of voices. He did the voice in the Walking Dead Telltale games, World of Warcraft. He's like the deep voice for every single character you can think of. Uh, he, puts it, he puts it well. He said, video games aren't so much about characters anymore, but real voices. So as long as, if you can speak clearly and evoke emotion and, and act decently, you can get into voice acting. It's just finding someone that's going to let you and waiting for, like, Troy Baker or Nolan North to die because all the major roles <laughs> go to those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but games are becoming so huge, involving so many voices. You look at a game like Assassin's Creed or any any of those open world games, they need thousands of voices, so... If you want to get into it, just do it, record a demo, whore yourself out, go on shows, talk about how you want to do it, and eventually someone hears you, and eventually someone sends you an audition, and and then it's up to you, right? There you go. There you go. People, if you're making a game, hire Matt Bradford. Hire him. Please, I'm an everyman. Anyone out there uh, making a game, you got got your man right here. here. Give him a call. You call us. Don't, don't call him. Uh, wait a Give us a call and we'll, we'll get a hold of him for it. It's a finder's feet type deal. Okay. <laughs> you, you well, that's what your agent job. said. That's yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys get me a job, I'll, I'll give you a finder's fee. It might be coffee. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. So, Matt, do you consider yourself to be a horrible gamer? Can you define what a horrible gamer is? Horrible gamer. I don't know. Do you got to put the definition to it? Just we're asking the questions. Right. He's well, back off. I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like CNN. Okay, I've defined horrible gamer as a gamer that just plays for fun, who's not going to win any tourna- tournaments anytime soon, uh, who's average. So I am a horrible gamer. If if you play with me online, I will not carry your team, but I won't let it down. Uh, <laughs> I can. I. I beat I, I beat Dark please, Souls. Please keep playing with me. <laughs> I, I beat Dark Souls three uh, with a lot of help and a lot of cheesing, and I I my my trophy counts. I'm in level twenty two PlayStation trophy count. Ooh. So I play a ton a ton of games, and I'm a trophy whore. So that's my definition. Like, of horror. like those trophies. Okay, I you know what? There's a program in the states PlayStation trophies where you can substitute yeah, them or yeah. trade them in. Yeah. To get discounts off game, why isn't this in Canada? I would be, I'd own like a division of Sony. It, it, it'll probably come up here eventually. <laughs> it's like it's it's like uh, the Microsoft Rewards program. Yeah. That used to be only in the states, but it's up here now. Same with Bing Rewards and all that stuff. We, we used to not have it, and then like I think it was about six months ago or so, I noticed that they were starting to do it in Canada. Okay. So. Well, hopefully, I can. I would I, imagine I, they'll bring it up here eventually. Because I don't get, like, I mean, I look at my PlayStation account, and I'm like, it's great, but what does it mean? Nothing. I, 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 existential crisis about playing video games. All <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <All> meaningless. It's <laughs> all so meaningless. What is this? I guess the experience, but... It'll lead to something, Matt. It'll lead to something. Once you hit level 30, you unlock a special reward. Do One day... Go- What's that? One day, a dev is going to look at your profile and go, this guy's got a lot of trophies. He's the guy we want voice acting for us. <laughs> right we found him, guys. <laughs> maybe maybe if they ever do that PlayStation show, The Tester, again, maybe they just sort of recruit from people who get trophy score 30. Remember that show, The Tester? The Tester? Yeah. What is wow. The Tester? Yeah, the, 
the PlayStation show. It was like yeah, ran for three or four seasons. Really? Yeah. I it loved it. Just our PlayStation. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It was like a reality that. show where a bunch of guys my age who have no jobs just try to become a video game tester, and they have to pass <laughs> a lot of video game theme competitions and stuff. Uh, yeah, just yeah, to I become was... a tester? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was back when the PS3 was just coming out, or it just been out for a little bit, I think, when that I came know. out. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Because I think when I first got my PS3, that's... I watched that show once, and I was like, yeah, this is stupid. <laughs> Man, I had my favorites. I was rallying for people. Did you watch it? You were right yeah, in. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I was so jealous. Oh, man. So, Matt, you said you play lots of video games. How often do you play video games? Like, like on average, how often do you say you play video games? An hour or two a day at night, depending on how much time at night I get for myself. Prior to uh, Offspring, it was a, a lot of time. Whenever Mariana hit the like, went to take a nap or did something, I was just playing video games. But now I work from home, so um, you know I, I play during work too, just to take a break and turn on uh, something off Steam, or I just go over to the couch and play PlayStation Four. So yeah, about an hour or two a day, I think. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, so does playing video games do they make you feel proud, ashamed, or indifferent? Like, how does playing a video game? How does knowing you play that much video games make you feel? In general? You know what? I've been playing games since I was like five. Like my dad brought home an Intellivision. And then from like that day, I just I don't think there's been a day where I haven't played some type of games. I think, I'm going to get really psychological here. My brain is always on and it's always thinking and it's always like I can't rest. But if I'm playing a game, I can zone into that game. And that just really helps me just kind of just forget Everything. Not that anything's bad, but just kind of, just really focus on one thing and just take a break from overthinking stuff. So the games are therapy for me at the end of the night, just to calm down, kind of get in a nice kind of calm zone. That's why I don't multi-game as much because I'm an only child. I just grew up playing video games by myself. <laughs> yeah. So I, I like that me time. It's it's kind of like a special. This sounds stupid. It's special special me time. <laughs> it's me time. Me time. <laughs> I know what you mean though. Like it just kind of. Get, you know, you get focused into a game, and you can kind of just forget about everything that's happening around you and yeah. zone in on it. It resets you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So is that is that why you play video games to kind of reset yourself or kind of just mellow out your brain, <laughs> get it focused yeah. on one thing? I think it's why I'm a trophy whore as well because it's that quick fix of like accomplishing something. <laughs> Like it's we all live we all live lives where all like things are kind of hard in adulthood, so it, games are kind of the way just to be good at something, accomplish something, get a quick fix of dopamine, and zone out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <Yeah. clears throat> so Matt, what what do you prefer playing games with? You prefer playing with people online or in person or neither? Like which one do you prefer the most or both? If I had to pick, if I had to pick playing with people, I'd pick probably um, in person, like people over at my house playing video games. Because that's yeah. what we all grew up with, right? We all grew up with going over to a friend's house playing Halo or Super Smash Brothers or being in the room and just like drinking Coke and eating pizza and, and having fun that way. Um, right now, I love playing Super Mario with my son, and that's a really yeah. cool experience. Just kind of being cappy on the new one and just letting him do his thing, and that's a that's been just a good way for us to hang out too. So yeah, definitely in person, I think. Mm. So so, uh, speaking of your son in Super Mario. Oh shit! Yeah. Are there any downfalls to having children <laughs> <laughs> playing on your console? Yeah, yeah. I told this story on VGO. So I had yeah. six hundred freaking power moons, and I was just on that last dark darkest side of the moon thing, and I was going for it. And I come down, and uh, Xander's like, I saved my game, Daddy. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I'm looking at his files. I'm like, Daddy, seems son. Be, seems to be two of your games saved and none of my games. <laughs> what happened? And he's like, a box came up, and I clicked it. And I'm like, mm, you clicked overwrite, I see. <laughs> so oh, man. I was like that's a month sad. and a half of, like, Power Moon collecting down the drain. And so my my mission has been, I've been watching him, and I, he's almost at 600 now, so I'm almost going to, like, just duplicate his file and, and pick up from there. Or, and my wife doesn't agree with this, or I might just show him how it feels. <gasps> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Teach him a really tough lesson about game save management. 
that. <laughs> yeah, but you won't do that because then you don't get to get the 600 moons back. <laughs> Plus, it would probably it would scar him for life, and that would be trust issues for the rest of your life. Yeah, oh, really. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Traumatize your child. Yeah, man, you probably grew up like yeah, a murderer or something like that. My dad, my dad erased my moods one day. Yeah. <laughs> he just carved. He just can kill blood. everybody. He's victims. He just carves like power moon numbers. Six zero one. You're six zero two. If I can't have the real thing, I will take it out on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I probably won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, Matt, uh, another question here. Let's move on and down the list. <clears throat> do you feel that video games have affected your life in a way that's more positive, negative, or neither? Definitely positive. I made friends out of it. Oh, did you win? I won a coffee. <gasps> nice. I haven't won a single. We have Roll at the Rim to Win in uh, Canada. It's a huge event over here. <laughs> it's a national event? It really is a national event. <laughs> to be honest, I won this coffee and one donut since the thing started. That's I've, I've it. I've won zero. I've won zero. I've won three trade. I drink um, two extra large coffees a day. Damn. Well, the odds are in your favor, then. Mm-hmm. No, uh, yeah, not. <laughs> the video game question, I think definitely positive. Like I said, I've, I've met a lot of friends through it. It's, it, that most of my socializing is through video game related stuff, right? It's how I've I've met a lot of uh, you guys, you know, uh, VGO that community there, the people I chat with every day. Um, and like I said, it's just I love playing games. I'd I'd rather my kids. What was that? I'd rather my kids grow up playing games rather than watching YouTube. Like I don't mind if if Sanders playing games. I mean, it's not all day, but like problem solving. Or, yeah. Just learning how to overcome frustration and, and hard things. So, hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely positive. Well, sometimes learning to overcome frustration. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes causing it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. He's okay. really good, though. He's really good at Super Meat Boy. Oh, really? He's super good at Super Meat really? Boy. I wish I could take a video of this because that kid's got skills, man. He's only wow. five years old. I should put him in a tournament and make money off him or something. <laughs> Esports. Started e-sports. early. Esports I'll, I'll for kids. Twitching. Yeah, twitching, that's what the kids are calling, right? <laughs> Streaming? There you go. I, mean, I always thought about that. I always thought, like, someone needs to come up with a platform for kids to stream games and just have a kid stream a game. I bet other little kids would watch that kid. You know what yeah. I mean? But the community, it would be would get so toxic that it would be. That's the problem with it, right? <laughs> you know, but you can you imagine, some... like, like having a kid just streaming and like having kids watch that kid? That kid would blow up, dude. Yeah, would. I mean, right now you got parents who kind of make their kids play video games for views. But yeah, just a completely kid only. The only thing is, how would you even police that from getting like weirdos not to sign up under fake accounts or right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or guys like. Guys like Ryan pretending to be <laughs> five years old. Zero. Hey guys, you lose so much money. Man, you're really good at gaming. Who's <laughs> gaming in their underwear? Send pictures. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that would be the problem, right? Policing that stuff, but I think the person who comes up with that idea, they're gonna fucking be huge. That kid is gonna be a fucking star by the time. They're in their teens. They're going to be like yeah. famous, like a famous person, like a legit famous person. You know what I, I mean? Remember, I remember before Twitch, I remember thinking like, wouldn't it be cool if I just played games and just had a website, a webcam on me while I just played games and that was my job? <laughs> like, I remember thinking of that. I'm like, there's no way that would ever make money or no one would watch that. <laughs> like, years no, later. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> there's a you whole fucking platform that makes games. money off of that. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. I, I, I sometimes I look at streamers and I'm like, dude, how do you get like? They get like donations from random people. Like, this person just donated three thousand dollars, and it's like, what the fuck? How the yeah, fuck like, did you just donate like three thousand dollars? Sure. What, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Having big boobs helps. Yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> probably. <clears throat> so, Matto, tell me, what have you learned from video games? What's one thing you've learned? This is serious. This is very serious. Very serious question. Perseverance. Because, um, yeah, he's going to sound dumb. Like, the old Batman Arkham Asylum games. Mm-hmm. I remember being, like, in a really stressful time at school. But the Batman games, I really wanted to platinum. And they had all their challenges that were just hard, like, beyond my The beyond Riddler my level. ones, right? Like, the Riddler challenges and all that? More so the combat challenges. Like, you know how, like, uh, the stealth combat challenges, and you had to get, like, gold. And they were so far out of my reach, but um, I kept trying, and I failed so many times, but I finally did, and I finally platinumed that game. And I kind of bled through to other challenges in my life where I'm like, you know, just... If I can stick with it, you'll get better, and, you know, you, you get better bit by bit. Same with Super Meat Boy. Um, when I played that, I wanted to really, like, get all the bandages, do all, like, the reverse levels and stuff, and that took, like, a month, and I did really good. I gave up because I found another game, but I, I did so much. <laughs> I know. Maybe that's not gave an inspirational up. story. And <laughs> <laughs> I gave up. <laughs> then I said, screw it. I gave up. <laughs> No, but that game was hard. That game was super, super hard. Yeah. He's been like I, all inspiration of normal things. Like I gave up. <laughs> this is the inspiration. This is the greatest thing ever. And then I just gave up. I had yeah. Track, uh, no, I gave up because I found another game. I don't know. Yeah, perseverance, problem solving. Um, people are. Yeah, people right, are, Matt. You went to the store and you were like. How can I not have to play this game anymore? I'll just buy a new one. Yeah, threw it out of my house. <laughs> threw it. It was, I was, it was on my hard drive, so I threw my PlayStation out the window. Um, yeah, no, I, I finally learned a lot that I don't even recognize from video games. Yeah. Like, the yeah. story I told was, like, uh, I learned how to drive stick in a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From playing, do you remember the arcade game Hard Driving? Really when it was really. all like it was all blocky looking, and there was yeah, a yeah. loop, and you actually yeah. sat in the car and you had the stick shift and everything, and yeah, mm. that's how I learned how to drive stick. That's right. That's through, awesome. Through that game. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I probably picked up some like practical skills. Yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of gunplay. Like I could probably shoot up a lot of people from what I've learned in video games. <laughs> oh no! Not what we wanted to hear, man. Are we really going here? Yeah. <laughs> no, man. You, I've never touched a real gun, but you put one in my hands. I could probably. It's just in there, right? You like yeah. So? Uh, you know what, Matt? I feel the same way, and I'm the same as you. I've never had a gun. I've never, I've never shot a gun in my life. Yeah. And I'm actually proud of that. I, like I don't want I don't to shoot a gun. You know what I mean? I don't want to ever have to shoot a gun in my life, you know? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that if someone put a gun in my hand, I would be able to shoot it and, and hit a target at least. I think you know? so. You think so? I think so. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. The Canadian I gun test. <laughs> no, you're not going to get me to shoot a gun. <laughs> this is think. where Ryan and I do a video of us going to a, <laughs> going to a gun range. <laughs> You guys don't know how to shoot a gun. You're like holding them all wrong and shit. Hey, Matt Bradford shot by Ryan. <laughs> Two idiots fatally shot in stand up. <laughs> probably. That's probably how it ended up. <laughs> I kind of want to do this. Oh my one. god. <laughs> Video game challenge goes bad. <laughs> oh, I can totally see the fucking headline. <laughs> man, <laughs> shit, that'd be crazy, man. I don't know. People, people, I don't know. I, I feel like some people feel that way, but guns are really fucking heavy. <laughs> They're heavier than a fucking controller, man. They're really heavy. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I, I shot a shotgun once, and that thing was fucking heavy. I remember just when I they first handed it to me, I was like, holy crap, this thing is heavy. Like, you don't realize how heavy a gun is until you're actually holding one, right? And, and people think it's so easy, but those things will fucking break your wrist, dude. Probably the recoil, too, will break your shoulder if you're not doing it right. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, yeah, you got you to, gotta, you know. <laughs> Hold it properly, or yeah. it's gonna kick. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> can't wait to try it. 
<laughs> Matt and Ryan go to the shooting range, try to hold the gun like a controller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We should get together and go to, like, David Buster's and, and like, just film us shooting, like, time cop guns. No, not good at time cop. That makes you think you're good at guns. That's the same problem. We need to get our hands on real firearms. Yeah. Real fire. Okay, guys, you go ahead and do that somehow. <laughs> oh. So, Matt, so, Matt, how much gaming do you consider to be too much, and, and why? Like, like, what is the point where gaming is too much gaming, like... Well, you would say I need to cut this off in my life. I think it's for each person. Hi, right, Wink. Thanks. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, it's different for each person. But if you start skipping social events or things that used to be important to you to, to game, maybe it's getting to a point where you are you need to reprioritize a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say there's any real limits. For some people, it's... Eight hours a day because they can. I mean, Ryan's on vacation. Play away, man. You've got time. But, um, you know, if it's affecting your work, if you're calling in sick and stuff, then, I don't know, games aren't going to pay the bills, you Unless you Twitch stream. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, we just talked. I mean, I could. <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, probably not for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I find I can't... I used to be able to do marathon sessions, like, all day. I find if I play for even two hours now, I start getting a little bit, okay, I just need to take a quick break, refresh, do something else, and come back to it. Like, my interest in the game gets lost a little bit. If I'm mm-hmm. playing, like, an RPG, after two hours, I won't want to do any more quests, because it seems like too much of a commitment. So I'll just put the controller down, do something else, and come back. See, I have a problem, and I, I think I realized what my problem is. The other day I was playing on PlayStation, because I just got a PS4 Pro, right? And and mm-hmm. I was playing, uh, I forget what game, some fucking game on PlayStation. I was playing it, and I have a problem, guys. My problem right. is not knowing what my friends are playing online. So since I don't, since like my, you know, most of my, my gamer friends are on Xbox, and I have, you know, you can see the list of what they're playing, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And on PlayStation, I don't have that. I mean, I have some friends on there that are from Xbox or whatever. They, they play on both platforms. But there's way less people online on my PS4 than there is on my Xbox any given day. There's usually like four or five people on PlayStation when there's like 80 people on Xbox. So playing yeah. the other day, I was sitting there playing. I forget what game it was, honestly. But I was playing it, and like I got anxiety from not knowing what my friends were doing. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, it's really fucking weird. I don't know, that right? Like, weird. <laughs> like, 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 like. I, I just anxiety uh, too, Jesus. I was like, where is he? He hasn't been on Xbox Live in he a couple of days. He's dead. He's dead. Is Jesus Did dead? He go missing? What happened to Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> about to send the Canadian Mounties to come find me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like, like, I, I realized that's the problem. It's not the games that are giving me the anxiety because for 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 a while there, like, I remember. When No Man's Sky first came out, right? I was playing that for, like, days, days, days. Like, you know, every day I was playing this game. And I wouldn't get on my Xbox. I would just be on the PlayStation. And then all of a sudden I had an anxiety attack playing No Man's Sky. I was, like, freaking the fuck out. And I think that's it. Like, I just need to know when my friends are playing so maybe I could play with them or maybe just even chat with them while I'm playing the game. It's become, like, this thing where if I'm gaming, I need to be online and be able to talk to people and, and see what they're doing and interact with them and game with them, you know? It's really weird. I well, got a solution for you, Jesus. What? The Xbox app. You just pop that thing there open, you, you can get your friends oh, list. Oh, man, you, you just keys. fucking... Oh, you just fixed my problems. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Ryan. You're, you're the gamer that games are catering to, though. I think you're the majority. Of people want to make gaming a social, communal thing. And I think it's working, because I, 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 honestly, man, I, I get on my PS4 and I'm like, all right, I have all these awesome games like Horizon I want to play, I want to play Uncharted, I want to play all these games, and then I start playing them and I'm like, oh, but what, I mean, I mean what if, like, my friend Brink is online playing PUBG right now? Like, what if I should get on Brink. PUBG, I don't you know? Or what if yeah. I should get over here and, and play some Rainbow Six Siege real quick with these guys, or some World War Two, Call of Duty, or Battlefield, so, it's really weird. Do you have fear of missing out, then? Do you have fear of... Some somewhere someone's playing a multiplayer game and you're not playing with them. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> or something. I don't know, man. I have a problem, guys. I have a problem. Yeah. Gaming disorder. I think I have it. I don't think it's a problem. Hey, wait. This just became the Jesus Spotlight Show featuring Uh-oh. Matt Bradford. <laughs> there we no, go. No, no, Matt I, Bradford I, I, is here I, I, to I help me through my problems. 
<laughs> oh man, but yeah. So so Matt, uh, so you so you you think too much gaming is when you start putting off your social life and all that stuff, right? Like that's yeah, when, when you start like much. ignoring people, or you know, you know, you should be doing something else, like work or going to something you were invited to, but you're just like, ah, I'm gonna play games instead. Sometimes that's fine, but if you do it all the time, I think that's a warning sign. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know that's been the same answer everybody gives us. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> everybody, no, no one's like. No, it's it, it's, it's true. It's, though, a, right? it's like, the best answer. That's why. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Original me. I would answer the exact same way. You know. So. Yeah. I mean, there's people in like uh, Japan who don't even leave their houses. Like they're online all the time, and that's their yeah. world to them, right? Um, like it's maybe if you have a community built up like that, but I don't know. There's you got to get out. You got to still, I think, do things and see people, and you got to balance. Yeah. All about balance. Real world. Yeah. You see that new game coming out? What's, what? I don't know who's making it, but there's a company making a new game. I don't know if it's in VR or not. It, it probably will support VR, but it's like the Oasis in in Ready Player One. It literally oh, cool. is the Oasis, pretty much. Like they yeah. even mention the Oasis when they're like playing their trailer for their new game. It's a Kickstarter game. And these guys have been working on it forever now, and they just launched their Kickstarter, and they raised so much money, already beat their goal or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but they're trying to make an online world that's persistent and living, and you can create your own character, and you can buy a house in this world, and you can live in this world and work in it and make money on it. Yeah. Really weird, man. But That's, that's <laughs> it what's going to happen. Someone's going to do it, right? <clears throat> like that's, that's just a guarantee that there's going to be a place like that in VR. Yeah. And man. then... It is going to be a lot of people kind of making the choice whether to live a VR life or live a... Oh, that's my phone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over at my phone. Like, Everyone's is checking their phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I put mine on silent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to get a... I had to replace my phone. So I got a loner phone just now. All right, I'm turning it off. <laughs> oh, no. What happened to your phone? My mic wouldn't work. It was an LG G6. I was supporting a, a third party, there an independent, know. and it... The mic kind of broke on me. That's what happens. Yeah, that's, that's what awesome. happens. Yeah. You get a good phone, Matt. Definitely won't go Apple. So, <laughs> it's between Samsung and... <laughs> Samsung's a good phone. I like the S8. It's a good phone. Yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm usually a Samsung guy. But the LG, I was like, I'll give it a shot. I've never tried another phone. I'm, I'm You know, I'm a wild guy like that. I like to try different phones. <laughs> you yeah. live a life you on should, the edge. check out the Pixels. Uh, yeah, the, the Pixel Google phones Pixel. phones are nice. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <clears throat> I'm rolling. So Matt, besides voice acting, what is your favorite thing about gaming or the games industry in general? And what is the worst in your opinion also? Favorite thing? Like we just live in a time where just like blockbuster games are getting released every month. And there used to be a time when like one or two games a year were the things you're waiting for, like the next Grand Theft Auto or next Halo. But now it's just you're just inundated with just these amazing games. And a lot of them get missed because there's just so much choice. But, you know, there's, there's so much to play. So I think it's a great time to be a gamer. And I think it's a... I think I also like how the indie community has so many venues now to make their own games. And you're seeing a lot of good stuff come out of indie developers. Uh, stuff that wouldn't have a platform before. I think the worst thing is the communities judging a game before it releases. Like games now are made or broken it seems before they even release and it, everyone's got their camps whether it's going to suck or not and it gets released and there's always the inevitable here's a YouTube video of a glitch I found it's a, it's a game breaker Ryan's, Ryan's dead uh, I, I think the video game community is just it needs to support gaming it needs to bring back the love a little bit man it just it's not, it, it's not we're not dealing with anything life altering it's video games we get so up in arms around video game issues sometimes like just relax it's you know like star wars battlefront 2 at the end of the day it it was it was bad it was it was a shady practice and i'm glad ea got you know got their hands slapped for that um but you know launching petitions and i don't know i i just feel like we need to just calm down and just enjoy games again because it seems like we're always looking for something to complain about as a community so I'm, i'm guilty of that but, I mean, there's lots of video game companies that come out with so many betas. Like, I mean, let's look at CFDs, for example. They just recently had another yeah. beta. 
and people keep judging the game based off of that, right? Like, and even though right. even though the developer can sit there and tell you this is not a full release, this is not a full release, this is not everything in the game, this is not a full release. There's yeah. glitches in this thing. People are still like, "Fuck that game! It's boring. It has nothing going on. It's just the ships. You're in a boat and you go get treasure and you bring it back and you cash it out and you go back out." Like, people judge it based on that, but they don't realize that it has a whole world and the whole thing going around it well, it's only going to get better right they're going to add stuff to it yeah um i do think it's it's getting to a weird point where a lot of games are being released unfinished and it's becoming like people don't care as much PUBG was up for game oh, of the man. year and that's not even a finished game and i, I played it. I, I like PUBG. well to be fair it was on pc it was. It was a 1.0 yeah. on PC in December, so... But it was still not a full release. Like, it's still a glitchy game. Like, I remember playing it and, and getting caught in that. It's still a great game, and I guess maybe people are excited about, like, the game mode that it introduced. Not introduced, because other games had that way before PUBG, but... That kind of brought to the light, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember playing that game mode in... Oh, jeez, uh... I call it, no, it wasn't Call of Duty. It was, like, a war series that... I don't know, but it was like Last Man Standing. You started out with 30 people, and slowly the map shrunk. It was the exact same mode, so it's not nothing new. I guess they just did it a lot better. And was it Arma? No, it wasn't Arma. It was, one, it was one of those generic... It was a series that ran for a long time, but... Like, Medal of Honor, maybe? No. It was in a... Yeah, I don't know. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess. But you're right, I mean... I think it's because we have so many games that people just give up on a game way too quickly. I think Sea of Thieves is is going to be a fantastic game once the community comes on board, once they develop more. I think it's just, for what it is, it sounds like a lot of fun. My buddy Ted plays it. I watch his videos. It seems like a lot of fun just to jump in and, and do yeah, stuff. Me, so. me, Jonathan, and Gunny played it for five and a half hours straight on the <laughs> weekend. Like, we just didn't stop. We just kept playing. We just like... Play, yeah. play, play. And then all of a sudden we were like, oh, wow, it's five hours later. And Jonathan's like, I got to go to dinner. <laughs> yeah, go to dinner <laughs> and we could get back in. Because <laughs> it would we close. We were just us. talking about this question, so that would probably be a point that yeah. we've been too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, man, yeah, I mean, do you think, man, in your opinion, does having a game like, let's say, Sea of Thieves, The Division, Ghost Recon, uh, PUBG, um, Destiny, uh, what other game is like that? There's lots of games like it where, where you have to be in an online world and play with people constantly. Do you think that kind of hinders a game and it makes certain people not want to buy it because either they don't want to pay for the online services or they just don't have internet or they just don't like gaming with people? Like for you, for example. Yeah, I, uh, I avoid those games. You I guess. avoid those games? Why? Um... Well, because it's predominantly a multiplayer experience. I, I always want the ability to just, like, distance myself from human beings and do my own thing. Um, so if, it's, if there's an online game that caters to lone wolves, like, I loved the Assassin's Creed multiplayer mode when they had multiplayer mode with their games. That, because that was cool. A, it was cool, That was, that was really good. It was such an interesting take. It was all about... I mean, you'd, you'd add teams modes, but there was that one mode where you just... You just stab people, and then everybody was a different around. target or whatever. Yeah, you got dre you got dressed up, and that to me felt like a single player multiplayer experience where I could still do my own thing. No one had to rely on me. I don't have to rely on anybody else. Just do my own thing, but also interact with other people. So I thought that was cool. Um, but I think I think one thing that hinders buying those games is you look at a game like Overwatch. Now, if you're new to Overwatch. Like for me, there's a huge hurdle I got to get over. Of I'm gonna go in Overwatch and suck, but I'm gonna. It's the community's not gonna like me at all. Like it's gonna be a real tough slog <laughs> oh, until man. I develop skills. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened to me in Rainbow Six Siege this weekend, right? Uh, yeah. So so I was playing it, and I'm not bad at Rainbow Six. I played that game countless of hours. I'm pretty yeah. okay at it, but when you leave the game and you come back to it, you do suck for a bit, right? Because there's a lot. The, the mechanics are much different from a from that type of shooter to like a, let's say a Call of Duty or Battlefield. In Call of Duty Battlefield, you can just run around and get kills. In Rainbow Six Siege, just you get killed, you're out for that round, and you're done, right? But I was playing this match with people online, and these assholes kept team killing me, 
and, and, uh, and voting to kick me from the match just because I wasn't ranked. Because, you know, the season reset or whatever. So, you're like... That's bullshit, yeah. Every season resets, and, and every season you have to go in and play ranked matches, and the ranked matches kind of give you a rank, or, like, how you stand, right? Like, gold, silver, yeah. platinum, or whatever. But I haven't done that for the new season. Because <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. play nine matches that... Each match is, like, six rounds, so they last, like, 40 minutes each match. Like, pretty much is 40 minutes. And I don't yeah, want to do that. Perfect. I just want to get in there and play casual. So I was in the casual mode... And all these people just kept voting to kick me, voting to kick, vote to kick, vote to kick, team yeah. killing me. And it's not like I was, I wasn't team killing them or hindering them. I was playing the objective. I was helping them out, getting kills and stuff, spotting people and whatnot. And, and they just yeah. kept fucking kicking me. I was so mad. I I gave up on it, dude. I was like, you know what? I'm done with Siege. I'm done with this game for now. Um, yeah, I think that's the case for a lot of games like that. Like even Destiny Two now. It's to get into a game, unless you're in from the ground with yeah. some of these games, there's communities well, that, and they, they get super pretty tight. And that yeah. happened to me in Sea of Thieves, actually. I was playing single by myself, and mm. I got into a group, but I was in a party with some friends. Mm -hmm. And, like, they just ended up putting me in the brig because oh, I couldn't, fuck. I wasn't talking to them. Like, I was uh -huh. playing the game, I was doing what I was supposed to do and whatnot, but because they couldn't communicate with me, they put me in the brig. I was like, well, fuck off. Strategy yeah, you need. Stupid. Attack this boat. That's all you need. <laughs> well, now you got one less person to help you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it is a detriment, and I don't know how to fix that. Yeah, how do you fix those fucking asshole communities that, that just kick you or or want to put you down because you're a new person they don't want to deal with teaching a new person how to catch up? Destiny is one of the worst offenders, in my opinion, because in that game, it's like, Oh, bro, we're going to go play the trials. It's like, well, can I join? Well, are you light level 370 and uh, yeah. and power level 50,000? Like, what the fuck? I don't know what any of this yeah. shit means. Have man. all the new guns. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to yeah. go in there with exotics, and we're going to go do this and this. And it's like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I just want to shoot yeah. things, right? Like, I just want to have fun. And you're sitting here trying to tell me about this exotic bullshit or this light level or this... <laughs> Power level is all these fucking levels that you need to have to even play with people. So annoying. But they should be encouraging people like to join the game. They should be taking them under their wing. It's that's how the game stays alive, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but apparently, some people just don't fucking like new gamers or something. Fucking noobs. Fucking noobs. Fuck noobs. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, uh what's what's a what's a memorable gaming experience for you that you just remember that you just did this amazing thing and and you were just like holy shit, wow, I just did this. I uh I I fall back on the story all the time, but it is like my number one video game experience. Okay. It was in the it was in the game Journey on PlayStation 3. And that had a multiplayer mode where you couldn't talk to one another, but you could you could emote, you could say something. You could chirp and at each other, right? You could chirp at each other, and uh, so I played from the start of the game to the end of the game, like a couple hours, just this rando dude, and I felt so close to him by the end of that game, because the game just has so many beautiful moments and so many um, just stop and wonder moments. And so I was doing this with a stranger, and then the game ended... And I'm just like, his name was something weird, like Dick Muncher 69 or something like, I was like, <laughs> I, I wish I could go and hug this guy because this is I love you, such Dick a Muncher. journey. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dick Muncher. Oh, that sounds uh, 69, not... it's you any time, Dick Muncher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, I mean, that, 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 that for me, it was like a defining moment for gaming for me. It was just kind of like, this is, this is what multiplayer should be for me just pure yeah. you're just helping someone out you don't really know them you don't have to talk to me they're their character right you don't yeah. know them as a person you know them as a character in the game yeah so <laughs> one of those moments happened to me in sea of thieves actually playing in one of the alphas um yeah. I, I was in the randomly this is like the first time i ever played this game so i had no clue what the fuck i was doing i spawned on this boat with this crew and this back in the day when they only had the four person crews or whatever and this british kid He's like, hey, you got a mic? I was like, yeah, I got a mic. What's up, dude? And he's like, me and this British kid formed a friendship <laughs> in like a matter of like an hour. We were just fucking yeah. like doing everything perfect. I was like, holy fuck. And when he yeah. had to leave, he was like, I got to go. My dad's telling me I got to go to bed, mate. Oh, this shit. And I was like, oh, man. 
Yeah. Not my British buddy. Like, oh, I was, I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> my British friends. <laughs> Did you send him handwritten notes? Come back. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was it was a moment, man. Like like you know, yeah. he was helping me out, and it was so fucking cool that like someone was willing to be an awesome player and just help me yeah. out instead of fucking kicking me from his crew or whatever, you know. Yeah, and they're out there. The awesome players are out there. It's just you just gotta find them. That's all. Yeah, I think another one earlier than that was playing Super Mario 64 for the first time in my life. That was just, that blew my mind, just <laughs> being able to run around as Mario in like a 3D space for the first time ever in game. Like, I just my little kid brain can handle it. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I haven't felt that same level of, wow, this is the next level of gaming since. But I was a kid, so I didn't really have too many experiences before that. <laughs> yeah, nowadays, everything's 4K and fucking 60 frames, and everything's yeah. so perfect. That's what bugs me sometimes yeah. is, you know, some games, some really, really amazing games will just get, like, just dismissed because it's not the flavor of the day. Like, uh, you know, it's either the new, the new Assassin's Creed, the new Horizon Zero Dawn, which I know not too many people are dismissing. Or so many just fantastic, huge games that we would have killed for back in the day. But now we're just like, eh, her hair doesn't look too good, so uh, it's a shitty game. It's on 4K, I'm not going to play it. It's just, I think we're so spoiled, man. There's so many good games around us. Yeah. 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 And then, oh, that's an indie game. I'm not going to buy that shit. I'm not going to fuck that. Yeah, well, you're missing out if, you're not, if, if, you're, if it's an indie game and you're not trying it because... That's where new ideas begin. That's when yeah. the big developers start copying. Right? That's how PUBG started, man. Like that thing was just Absolutely. a mod that somebody made, and it became a fucking huge thing. You know, like if nobody yeah. would have tried that, that game would be nowhere right now. We would still be playing Call of Duties and shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fortnite yeah. wouldn't be around. You know, like so many things would never happen if that would have never taken off. Oh yeah, just wait for next year. Everything's gonna have a. Uh... PUBG Battlegrounds yeah. mode. Red Dead Redemption is going to have it now, supposedly, so we'll see what happens. That'll be so. cool. I, I'm down for that. I love Red Dead. <laughs> I'm down for that. It's going to be fucking cool, <laughs> man. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I know you said this earlier, and you, you already answered this question, but just to clarify, you have you formed any friendships or relationships through video games that are really yeah. meaningful? Absolutely. I mean, well, you guys for one, and then uh, you know, video game outsiders. It sounds like we hate each other, but I think I think we're friends. I don't know. <laughs> if John, it's, it's been seven years. I still don't know where I stand. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I've uh, definitely uh, you know some of my really good friends are people I just met playing gaming or in gaming communities, right? Um, like I got I've got a dude that I talk to in G Chat every single day. I've only met him two times in my life, but I've through Twin Galaxies when I used to work with Twin Galaxies, like. Him and I wrote for that together, so it's been just, it's almost a decade now of a friendship. So, oh, yeah, yeah I you used to write for Games Radar, too. Yeah, and Twin Galaxies, I was editorial that. director for Twin Galaxies before the whole uh, cheating yeah. controversy. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, no, I did a ton for Games Radar for years. I did their news and those top ten lists, those clickbait lists. Clickbait. But, uh, it was fun to write. It was fun. And, yeah, the Guinness World Records Gamers Edition. I just Yes, kept, uh, right. I capped another one of those. You do a lot of things, man. You do so many things, man. You do too I try. Many things. I love video games. I love doing anything for video games. I can't make games. I'm not artistic. So I try to get involved any other way. <laughs> <laughs> On the peripheral. Um, and this, this year, actually, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it. I don't know if I signed an NDA. Mm. Oh, no, I'll let you know. But, um, <laughs> I'll I let you to, know. I, yeah. I got, a, <laughs> I, I, I got to interview... Um, the the heads of a lot of the video game charities like Child's Play and um, Smash oh, yeah. the Record, the Super Mario Marathon, Mass Effect, like a ton of those guys, and I just got to like just chat with them about it. And I think that's where I want to go next is get involved somehow in video game charities, whether it's like yeah. hooking up with a local group here or maybe doing something, running an event in Barry. Like Ryan, you can come up and help me run an event in Barry or something. Yeah. So hey, child's play. If you want to hold a charity event somewhere, I might know a In real mobile. cool place yeah. that we could go to that has about 75 pinball tables in it. Yeah. So we could do a charity event if you want. I could talk to the guy about it. So, like, just just yeah. a thought. Where, where is that again? Kitchener? In no. Pickering. 
Pickering. Do people live in Pickering? Yeah. I, yeah. I grew up in Pickering. <laughs> You're the survival. You're that one guy. <laughs> Pickering's the Springfield of Ontario. It has the yeah. power plant. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Pickering power plant. That's right. Yeah. That explains all. So, sounds lot. like a made up town, guys. Why are you guys making things up on the show? <laughs> guys, stop Nuclear making up power. names. Pickering, right. come on. This sounds like Let's a totally coal. made up name. Let's get that coal industry back up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt, uh, what did your parents think of video games growing up? Did they like like you playing them? Did they tell you not to play them? Did they tell you you're wasting your time? Did they support you playing them? Yeah, there was a weird period where, like, growing up, they didn't care too much. I got a lot of, like, you've been playing this for a long time, maybe stop. But then I became a, an adult, and I kept on asking for video game gifts or video game cards for my gifts. And I always get, like, the stink eye from my dad or my mom. But then I started getting, like, doing work for the video game industry, and, and they started to see that like, I'm, not, I'm not outgrowing this. This is my hobby. This is what I love to do. So I think now they're totally cool with it. But I think there was a period where, like, yeah. our son's not maturing because he so, keeps wanting he's to. He's a fucking games. nerd. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's not like I come from a family of jocks. My my dad was a writer. Oh, he is a writer, and um, my mom is my mom. I mean, it's not like me becoming a nerd was a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, Matt. So so. Uh, I got a very important question for you. Where do you see the future of gaming going in 10 years? And and how will society perceive games in the future? Like, how do you think it'll affect people's perception of games in the future? 10 years from now, 2028. 10 years from now, it's going to be so ingrained. Uh, You know, just as everybody talks about what movie do you see on the weekend, it's going to be what game do you play on the weekend? I mean, it's because it's us. It's our generation, right? We're coming up. We're making that such a normal thing. I don't know one person by age who doesn't game in some form, whether it's something on their phone or on a console or on their PC or it's a casual game. Like, everyone's got a game, and it's such a unifying thing now it, where it wasn't as much before. So in 10 years, once you got that virtual reality going, I think you are going to get the World of Warcraft for VR, and that's going to be the next thing that people are worried about. And that's going to shape a lot of stuff, I think. But it's, it's, it's going to be so commonplace. It's just going to be... What did you do on the weekend? What games you play? Basically, it's it's the next it's the next form of enter, major form of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a lot of it's ways, interactive. Guess, unlike TV, that's not you know, yeah, it's something yeah. that you can you're you you actually work your brain to do. You know, yeah. I remember one time I was working at a radio station, and the girl there was just like really just like looked down her nose at me because I played video games, but all she did was watch The Bachelor every night. It's like, yeah. <laughs> what is the difference? Yeah. Like, how are, how are you placing a value judgment on video games when people are zoning out the TV for decades? It's just, it's what I enjoy doing. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of waste time. time. You're wasting your time. Watch The Bachelor. So, so doom. <laughs> Kill people. Watch The Bachelor instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, man. I, I think video games are going to be the next big. Well, they already are the big thing, but I think they're going to be a bigger thing in ten years. And you're right. I mean, I, I really do see like TV shows dying. I see them becoming more uh, interactive. I think you know where where like you might see a TV show, but you're going to have a chat on the side. Yeah. Where you can just yeah. chat with people about the TV show while you're watching it. You know, like I think that'll become a thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I always thought a really good app would be, and don't steal this idea, is where it's so kind of... Hang on. This is, well, is going to go <laughs> live to everybody, so make sure you patent this idea before patent you... Patent penning, patent penning. Matt Driver's <laughs> idea. So it's an app that picks up whatever you're watching, like a TV show or movie, and places you in it's like a random chat room, random audio chat room with just people around the world. Like maybe just limit it to six people. There you so go. just six strangers you're watching the show with and just getting your reactions, and you can, like, jump from group to group, or you can set your own group, but it'd just be, like, your little app companion. I think that would be cool. That'd be pretty neat. Canadian. But it would pick up, right? Like, just, just sort of, it would, like, Shazam <laughs> picks up songs, it would pick up what show or movie you're watching, or yeah. whatever content you're watching, yeah. and create a chat room just for that. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I, I agree, that would be awesome. Like I said, I want, like, a chat like if like if you're watching a football game or a basketball game or a sporting event or whatever the hell you're watching, the Super Bowl, we'll say, yeah, it'd uh, be co- so cool to fucking have a chat on the side. Yeah, and you see yeah. what people are saying constantly. Like, 
Like, oh, fuck this team. I can't believe they just did that. Or, or what are they going to do next? You know, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, but here's the thing. For a football game, that chat would be going a mile a it minute. Would, just fucking. Yeah. Brrr, you'd never hear that's read why the I, comment. <laughs> you need audio. I think audio chat would work best. Oh, you, God, that would be even worse. <laughs> you'd have people playing <laughs> music in the crazy. background. Just be everyone talking over each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Good ideas are always ruined by people. <laughs> it, has to, it has to be like you meet in a room of, of crazy chatness and you can go off into a separate room yeah, with, with yeah. the people that you want to talk with. Hmm. I guess you just pick up the phone and do it. I don't know. <laughs> pick up the phone and do yeah, it. Yeah, there's this thing called text messaging. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you just... Guys, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> You've got contacts. Call them numbers. Oh, whoa. And you can voice activate your contact. One direct communication <gasps> while you're watching it. You mean actually talk to somebody on this thing? Yeah, hands-free. What? Yeah. This is fucking crazy. This is the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Indian patent society. <laughs> oh man, that's nuts. Yeah, oh, fuck. It's gonna be crazy in the future. I, I can't imagine what video games will be like in ten years, dude. I, I see games like Horizon and and games like, for example, on the Xbox. You know, we see games like like Tomb Raider and Gears of War. These games look so fucking real. Sometimes it is so crazy. I can't yeah, imagine yeah. what they look like in ten years. There was a picture on Reddit today of just, like, Tomb Raider from 1998 to 2018. Oh, wow. Just, yeah. It was just light years different. So can you imagine 20 years from now? It's just, <laughs> it's going to be realistic people in a virtual reality. Like, once they get virtual reality porn going, like, that's going to be the downfall of society, I think. Yeah. Wait till <laughs> you just put a contact in your uh, eye, and that'll be your VR fucking yeah. thing like a contact in your eyeball <laughs> i'm pretty sure vr porn is a thing already it and it is it's not good yeah it's a thing yet <laughs> <laughs> i always have to watch those videos uh, I, I won't get into it <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Always, there's always those vr videos and you're like i wish i had a vr headset hmm. Hmm. matt do you listen to the Horrible Gamers? And if so, when did you start listening to the show? And if you don't, it's okay. We don't take offense. If you don't, you're a busy person. Regularly. But if you're broadcasting live on Facebook, like you used to do, I'll, um, I'll lurk on the Facebook page. Uh, when I start, though? Yeah. I don't know. You guys have been doing this for a little while, so I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I kind of just lurk in the background. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> That works. That works as an answer, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I was going to ask you what your favorite HGP moment was, but I don't know if you have one. That's there's a Matt Bradford came on like months ago. I, that, that was guy. a really insightful episode. <laughs> yeah, that guy came on. You know, Matt, when you came on, that fucking episode got so many downloads. Yeah, so, every time you come on, so many we downloads, get like a bazillion downloads. What's up no with idea. that? why that's happening i absolutely do not <laughs> are you hacking the internet or something are you doing all these downloads like, like russian bot army <laughs> <I think. laughs> are they downloading all these shells what's going on here <laughs> yeah, yeah i found out how to actually get them to work for you and it's fantastic <laughs> i once had overnight ten thousand new twitter followers oh there you go and i felt like a rock star and then i realized they're all like bots and then they corrected and, and the score went down <laughs> deleted all your bots <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh man, that's crazy! Like, yeah, like twelve thousand followers. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing. I'm making it. Mom <laughs> <laughs> uh, made it. Come on, I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, I listen to, to, for context, I listen to three podcasts. I listen to my brother, my brother and me, Comedy Bang Bang, and it's the other one if I have time. Horrible uh, gamers. Yeah, horrible gamers. <laughs> <laughs> And No Sleep Podcast, because that's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the No Sleep Podcast real quick. Yeah, one of my favorite... Eyes, no, one of my favorite <laughs> podcasts <laughs> on the fucking internet oh, is the No God. Sleep no Podcast. Sleep podcast. Yeah. No, no, let the It really the is one of my favorite podcasts out there. The fucking production on that shit is crazy, man. Right? The music, the, the effects, yeah. the whatever the hell wizard magic you guys are doing over there. 
Matt, you were on it not that long ago, actually, like a week ago, right? That you were on the last Anime episode. Body pillow. I dude, that story. <laughs> If you haven't heard that fucking story that Matt did on the last, I think it was the last episode of the season or whatever, it was, it was fucking nuts. <laughs> oh, you fell in love with an anime pillow. You were all in love with it and shit, having sex with a, this pillow. There was a 30 oh, second sex scene with me and an anime there was, pillow. <laughs> <laughs> there and was. Yeah. There oh, was man. a, there's a no sleep uh, podcast group, like a fan group. And uh, I went on the next day and they're just like, I have a lot of really weird feelings about Matt Bradford right now. Because there's a lot of like, house moms are like, I was listening to this at work, and I had to turn it off. But then I listened to it secretly at home. I'm like, oh, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with my hand down my pants. Ooh. <laughs> I enjoyed it one <laughs> Yeah, that, that episode took a turn at the end, and I was like, oh, fuck. I was not expecting that. Um, yeah. I, I was expecting some paranormal activity type shit going on there, but it was pretty wild what it turned out to be. <clears throat> yeah, sure. yeah. But but I really like that show. And 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 Matt, you do you do VGO of course, and that show is pretty good. Um, when they're not talking shit about you, <laughs> <laughs> so far. <laughs> um, but you know I like that show. And then but the No Sleep Podcast, dude, you're killing it with that man. That's fucking huge. That is a that is a huge I I love No Sleep Podcast because it's uh, first of all I get paid they actually pay me to do that awesome. which is awesome it's not a, it's not a ton but to get paid for voicing it's great um, they're on a tour right now and I'm super hardcore jealous because it's a North American tour um, and it's all the like the American guys like all like in Saturday like think of it as Saturday Night Live like I'm the I'm the and guest starring Matt Brad. <laughs> like I'm the guy at the end yeah. who's like eating a hot dog on the street that you don't know, and the, <laughs> the other people are like the main cast members. So I think I'm the newest person on the team. I just so I just got to work my way in. But I've been on for a couple seasons. I do, I do, I do a fair number of stories. Yeah, a lot of character stuff. Yeah, yeah. listen to Matt. He's usually a teenager. Yeah, I'm usually. Well, I'll, this isn't a scary voice. Let's be honest. <laughs> he's usually so like, he's usually a teenager kid that that got himself into some crazy shit all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. I'm in a forest. If if you hear me, odds are I'm in a forest, or I'm about to like have sex with a demon or something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, uh, Mr. Demon. Hey, Demon. <laughs> Hi, guy. Fucking um, Zombie Cast 2, Monday nights. Zombie Cast, yeah, yeah. listen yeah. to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With, with our friend Ted and, and, and Sean, Sean, Freeman. Sean Apple Freeman. Sean iPod Freeman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. So, awesome. Awesome. Thank you for coming on, Matt. I mean, I really appreciate this. I know you're a busy person. I know you take time out of your day to come on and do this. If, sure. if if you want to listen to Matt, you can find him, you know, on all those shows. And Matt, they can also find you in video games, and hopefully, in a lot more video games coming here in the future, right? So I hope Uncharted yeah. Five. Appreciate you guys letting me. Uh, <laughs> the Last of Us Two, Gears of War Uncharted Five. 5. <laughs> I could be like Nathan's little brother that he. Uh, Halo Six. He didn't know he had. Yeah. Halo Six. <laughs> Matt Bradford is the oh, next. Master Chief, we gotta get. <laughs> <laughs> there it's you go. Master Chief's teenage son. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the rock ships. Oh. <laughs> oh, and then you hear him every week on our show on the intro, guys. He is the voice that does our intro. Matt, we appreciate it so much. You guys are awesome. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on. And with that being said, you know where to find us. You know where to find me. You know where to find Ryan. But Matt... Clarify real quick for the listeners in case they just didn't listen to the last ten minutes where they could find you. <laughs> uh, just yeah, at Matt McFly, M A T T O M C F L Y, and that's uh, Zombie Cast, Video Game Outsiders, and No Sleep Podcast. Well, there you go. And by debris. Buy debris. Buy Buy debris. Buy it. Buy buy like a million copies of that game. Let's keep buying it. Buy new computers to buy debris. <laughs> Make new Steam accounts every day and buy the game. Yeah, yeah instead of buying buy new right. computers, dude, that's way too expensive right <laughs> now. <laughs> Just keep making new accounts yeah. and keep buying debris. That's Treat it like bitcoining, except you're you're investing in my future. Just keep on <laughs> buying new computers. 
<laughs> to mine for debris downloads. And then and then buy the buy the Steam, buy it on Steam, but yeah. buy it as a gift, and then gift it to some developer. So yeah. hopefully that developer oh, plays the game, yeah. and then hears the voice of Matt Bradford, and ends up get, getting a hold of him for this Ryan, for for Uncharted Five. I don't know what you're paying this guy, but this guy deserves a raise. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. He's Canadian. He's Canadian. I mean, he works for donuts <laughs> and coffee and Tim Hortons donuts. and thank yous <laughs> and sorry, oh, sorry. Eh? sorry, 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 sorry. That would be one thing in our gun video. Just be us going sorry all the time. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, people. That's it. We're done. We're done. We're going to be back next episode of The Horrible Gamers. Enjoy this. And if you want to be on the spotlight, you know where to reach us. Feedback at HorribleGamers.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can message us personally. You can message me on Xbox Live. Message Ryan. Get a hold of Gunny. Any of us will get you in contact to uh, get you on the spotlight if you want to be on it. Uh, you know where to find Matt Bradford if you want him in your video game or voice acting for you. Or maybe he just voice acts for like birthdays or something. I'll do anything. Like like literally happy birthday, and then Matt will like say something for you or something. If you need like birthday gram cards, there you go. Yeah. You know, any gram he cards. Voice them. Any gram. Any like gram. Death in the family. <laughs> It's just like, <laughs> sad to inform you of that. Your husband <laughs> is dead. I'm not prepared to break the news for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Just... I'll be a bad news breaker. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> he has lots of uses, people. He's, he's a very resourceful person. <clears throat> but... We're done. We're done. Peace out, Brussels Sprouts. We'll see you on the next edition of the Horrible Gamers Podcast. Bye. Bye. Clean your controllers and go to bed. Goodbye. Yeah.